Without academic freedom, many of these books would probably not exist. To talk about this fundamental right, the European Parliament's Panel for the Future of Science and Technology held its conference in the heart of the European Parliament Library. I can think of no better place to launch our new EP Forum for Academic Freedom. It is important that we protect scientific freedom, that we protect academics, and that we continue to work on science and technology as one of the fundamental pillars that underpins also democracy. The forum will offer a platform for discussion on academic freedom involving the European academic and research community. The European public can see that one of the three institutions shows what had been violating academic freedom in the last year. And I think that is a valuable instrument, not just to shame and blame, just to make aware about the threats. The Dutch Minister for Science and Education, Robert Dijkhaaf, backs the idea of a pan-European initiative. His government recently launched a digital platform to support scientists in his country who were victims of threats, online hate speech or intimidation. One thing I learn again and again is if you are threatened as a scholar, it's very important to immediately hear from your colleagues, from your institution, from society, to know that you're not alone and that actually uh, what, what you are saying is of great value to all of us. Professor Kurt de Ketelare, Secretary General of LIRU, a network of 23 European universities, agrees. But like many here, he remains concerned about countries like Hungary, whose governments control higher education. One of the worrying elements in the framework of the ERA, the European Research Area exercise, was that only half of the member states is supporting EU initiatives in the field of academic freedom. To better protect universities, researchers and scientists throughout Europe, the Stoa Chair is calling for academic freedom to be enshrined in EU treaties.